should kids even be doing that? And to date, we still don't know who the younger child star is. Oh, I didn't know that. I went to school with Topanga. You went to school with Topanga? From what I saw, not cool. Wallahi. Wallahi. Welcome in, her babies. Another episode of the A-Rabs podcast. Ah! <laughs> Why do you do that? That's my thing. Oh my god! Dude. How does it feel? How does it feel to what to appropriate my Don't lineage? <laughs> stop, dude! Rap, rap, stop calling me the boy in striped pajamas. That's really f- up. This is a nice shirt. <laughs> I like the shirt. It's a good shirt. As an IDF supporter, oh, both wait, of you. Both never of mind. You never are. mind. You guys are repping Israel hard today. <laughs> It's insane, dude. I, I what, are you, what are you gonna say to that? I literally have been experimenting with fashion, and mm-hmm. I put this on today to because you guys always make fun of me. And now look at how there's I look. not one time that I've made fun of you for your fashion. Yeah, you do. You make fun of me. You made fun of me last night. You said, "What's this shirt? Why does it look like it's pre-stained?" <laughs> no, I didn't say that. I didn't say pre-stained. Did I say pre-stained? You said it after you accidentally spilled the beer on him. Well, I spilled the beer on you, and I was like, oh, it works, because it already looks like it's pre-stained. You're a piece of shit. But it didn't work. We didn't know where the stain was. Uh, okay, I under... Dude, it looked good to me. I liked the shirt. I was very proud of you. Did I not gas you up when you when I saw you? I was like, what is this? What is this shirt? No, dude, I'm proud of you. You're trying new clothing, and I think it's working out for you in a good way. Oh, my God. What? C- coffee stain on my pants it looks like i pee peed myself yeah coffee but you know what he said the other he called me the other day the other day and he said uh, verbatim he said i was driving around and i had to pee but i couldn't find a place to pee and i was like dude you, you always have to pee inside your car and then did he say and he tried I, to pee in his car but he, didn't and have, he, he looked around he's like i didn't have anything to pee into so then i got out of the car it went pee and then I accidentally peed myself and yeah, then i went yeah, home yeah he did say that that's exactly <laughs> what he said he accidentally peed himself and then he went home can you, <laughs> well, you always pee yourself when you're peeing in the this car this is what's can I going sh- on can i show this picture i took of capri the first time <laughs> we we all hung out together what is it I'm sick and tired of you peeing on yourself. This is, this is you're f- like incontinent and you're not at the age where you should be incontinent. No, yet. it's just because I drink like four cups of coffee, then get in the car and drive in 15 minutes of traffic. And then That's I'm like, okay, I'm going to pee myself. what they all say. Mm. This is the first picture I took of Capri whenever we hung out. What is it? The first one you took of him? Oh my God. That's not pee. <laughs> That's not pee. Explain yourself. I spilled water on myself. Yeah. You also tend to spill pee on yourself. I did too. not spill pee on myself. Huh? I Imagine pissing water. yourself at the Orange County Fair. Was that at the fair? Yeah. Buddy. I didn't pee myself. We had a good day that day. No, we didn't. We had a great time. You that peed was yourself? a really good time. I did not pee myself. Raph and I literally got shot in the air and we didn't pee ourselves. What size shirt is that? XL? Mm-hmm. Why is it too big? It might be a little too big. Yeah. Why would you let big. me get on the podcast like this? I have a change of clothes, too. No, I think you're fine. Just make sure you're, like, your stomach's kind of covered a little bit. Is it... <sighs> You're so dramatic. It's not that big of a I deal. Mean, to be honest, I might you might have to go like into your Cuban era where you're you know like, why just wearing wore, like a. Do you know a why white... I wore this hat? Why to remind me of the worst podcast I've ever watched? <laughs> and this is what it's you can't, feeling like. You can't fight. You can't. You can't start calling people out that we might potentially need help. Well, no, from we're not going to need help. When Schultz and the Nelk Boys did their podcast and it didn't get released, that's the worst podcast. That's what I feel like every week on this. This that was a great episode. It too. was great. That's why I wear this. I don't even there. These guys and me will disagree on ninety percent of things, but it was the best episode of podcast. I've also, ever seen great hat. Life. It's a good hat. It is a good hat. It's high quality. It feels racist. I have but one it's too. Good. It's kind of like a yeah, but it's good. It's a good hat. It makes you want to go golfing. Really? You, know? you want to go golfing? A kinda. I haven't been golfing in forever. White guy. What? <laughs> he like, just goes, yes. yes. You want to go golfing? Love golf. Yeah, he does. Yeah, I've obviously. never I've never like done like an actual like 18 holes or whatever, or, like a few holes. You know, like, I've only ever like driving I've done, range. I've done a lot of holes. When I was mom. younger, I did because I was trying to like have friends. I did every Saturday. Um, I had a friend of mine take golf lessons as a kid, and I would go and join him on those golf lessons. And I would take every like Saturday for like a month, I would go take golf lessons. You know what my Saturday activity was? Prayer. <laughs> Mosque. Allah, come on. Roller skating. Uh, four wheels or inline? Four wheel. Oh, I did that too. The ones that are like that look like little skateboards. 
Yeah, I know how to do both. Or I used okay. to anyways. The ones that look like little skateboards. Yeah, the four wheels, like a little skateboard. Oh, yeah, yeah, where it's like, yeah. 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 Dude, there's a roller rink near my house. You guys want to go? Dude, I'm down. Uh, I was, was, we listen. should go to a roller rink. You want to dress up like 70s, 80s yeah. and like go to a roller rink? Yeah, the problem though with the roller rink right now is I feel like we're going to be like way too old to be on that. Who's we? Here's the thing. You got to stop saying we now. Listen, no, you guys are way too old. Are you fucking We are in our 20s and we're thriving. Just because you're pushing 40 doesn't mean that we're old. Thriving is pushing I'm you, not but pushing I am you. I am alive. We're thriving. I'm thriving in my 30s. You guys are barely surviving in your 20s. And Scootish is barely alive, okay? So eat shit. Yeah, but in our 20s, we live on our own. In your 20s, you were at home with your parents. True, but it was glorious. Yeah. It was a, <laughs> I, I mean, I wish. If my mom lived in sunny California, Los Angeles, I'd be living with her too. Yeah. There you go. See? Yeah. All I'm saying is, is, so I used to roller skate whenever I was younger. And then when COVID happened, you know how everybody wanted to be like active and shit and yeah. like wanted to find activities? Mm-hmm. I tried getting back into rollerblading. Skating. No, blading. Oh, wow. I did, yeah. So. Popping suds. So it took forever to find. What? <laughs> I'm sorry. With this episode, it was probably not the best joke to make, but puppet suds. Team puppet suds. You don't know what team puppet suds? No. You never seen Brink? No. You never see Brick? No. Okay, Brick is a good movie. You should see Brick. Brink is this movie. You never watched the Disney Channel movies with like where you're a kid and like Johnny Tsunami? I've watched those, yeah, but I don't remember that one. Oh, speaking of like our beans one that went viral. I we okay, yeah, we'll go back to your thing. Go to your thing. Go to your thing. Tell us no, about your role. No, go to your, no, no, no. I know. I already saw Frogan's face. Go to your thing. I I'm so sorry, AD, I ADD out, okay? I'm sorry. Now Frogan's story is all ruined. Just talk about you did Team Puppin' Suds was a fucking Disney Channel movie, okay, where they fucking, he he was like a skate, a blader, and then he fucking fought with another white guy to, to have sex with a girlfriend, I think. That's how the, all these movies go. Disney Channel movie? They all do the same thing. They go, oh, if you can ski faster down the mountain, you see, you could have my girl. It's fucking sexist, but as a kid, I didn't know any better. I bobbed my head to it, and then what happened is he ended up being poor, and he had to go and work with a fucking dog wash place. Okay? You don't understand Brink. She's on the brink of beating the shit out of you. <laughs> so my activity was getting back in the rollerblading, but the T. Te- <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't need you to collect yourself and readjust your energy because I'm not having it today. <laughs> we have such a serious episode. I'm trying to get all the laughter out right now. I need you to. Pretend to be interested. I don't even care. <laughs> I'm, gonna do, I'm doing your face during the segments that you don't like. <laughs> yeah, I did. I did. That's what she does every time. When I talk about, I talked about VR. This is Frogan. I was listening. VR, I was listening. Your boring ass movie segment, I didn't give a fuck about. <laughs> watch a fucking movie then watch any movie none of us watched any of the movies i did i watched all the movies no you didn't i watched trailers that's not the fucking that's movie. a synopsis fuck your synopsis that i hated that it was so boring okay it was not I'm sorry. good. that was a bad episode that was a bad episode of the podcast anyways <laughs> so i was trying to get back into fucking rollerblading but the thing is i fell down the fucking stairs and i sprained my fucking ankle so when i tried to go rollerblading two weeks after well, why would you try to rollerblade off a of fucking what? second story building no i mean i fell down the stairs when you i was tried you you didn't no. you, you didn't rollerblade for years at this point no. and then you were like let me try to jump off no. a giant building here's the thing though no, no i was walking down the stairs one day but i was playing animal crossing i was walking down my apartment stairs and i fell mm. <laughs> and I snapped my ankle. <laughs> and, then, and then that night, I went to a protest at the White House. <laughs> and then somebody, okay, I don't know if I can include this in the podcast because I don't want to get like charged for shit. But it was like at the peak of George Floyd, Floyd protest. Mm-hmm. And I went to DC, I went to the White House to protest. But I had sprained my ankle like two hours before we went. And I wore sandals. And shit was getting like physical with Secret Service. And, like, we were, like, pulling the gates, and then I, like, got pulled backwards, and my sandal fell off. And as I went to go grab it, somebody grabbed my sandal and threw it at the Secret Service. (laughs) And I was like, fuck, like, that was my sprained ankle sandal. So then I had to go up to Secret Service, and I was like, can I have my sandal back, please? And he deadass gave me it back. Dude, you... That's awesome. That's awesome. No, that's really cool. That would have been a much better story. You should have gave me, like, one of those, like, intros, like... Wait, like what does that have to do with you fucking rollerblading, though? 
Yeah, she really just I wanted... sprained my ankle at that point. Uh, that's I sprained my ankle that day. That whole day was wild. The, you took us on this journey just to tell us she anyways, sprained your ankle. Anyways, she just weeks. wanted to talk. I don't think you understand. She just wanted to that's get That's not the floor. true. She didn't want to just yap. She was contributing to our conversation. Don't be a dick about it. Okay, the Secret Service thing is great. Okay, what kind of sandals? But what? Were but what? They're like okay, brick, but what does that have to do with you? So your ankle was sprained. I sprained it that day. That's why I told the story. Because it was like a stupid fucking day. Like, why did I like... If this oh. podcast gets what were we talking about that we got to that conversation? It's roller skating. But anyways, so I tried picking up rollerblading yeah. uh, two weeks after I fucked Sprained my ankle. ankle. Yeah. I reheard it again. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> But one last well, roller... I'm sorry. No, no. Keep going. No, no. Keep no, it's going. fine. No, we're enjoying this. No, I'm enjoying it. This we is great. I'm laughing. We have, a great, we have a serious episode. I need to get this all out. Go. <laughs> so I went... My friend took me... So I didn't live in Michigan at the time, but I went to visit... And for my birthday, she took me to a roller skating rink to like relive our childhood because I'd go with her every weekend. Bro, I swear to God, as a fucking adult, you start feeling back pain in places you didn't think you could feel pain. Where'd you feel it? In your back? Like my lower back, like not like a oh, normal lower back. Oh, your gluteus maximus is connected to kind of your lower spine? Not even. It was like, I didn't even fucking know, but I was like, yo. In your asshole? <laughs> it was in your asshole. <laughs> <laughs> no, listen. Feel it in your anus. <laughs> you feel it inside of you. Do you ever get asshole pains? Yes. No. He's I keep that shit tight. He's a fucking liar, dude. When's the last time I had an asshole pain? Have you ever had spicy food, motherfucker? Yeah. No, that's not like really it. Pain. Is it spicy when it comes out? Sometimes. Yeah, exactly. No, no that's not, <laughs> no. not pain. That's pain. Whenever you get your period, sometimes you get like asshole jolts. It feels like you're, <laughs> <laughs> it feels like you're getting stabbed in the ass. Mm. I never get that with my period. Mm. Mm. I've never gotten to see. That's the most disgusting thing I've ever heard. It's, it's what is like an a, asshole jolt? It's just like a random pain. You're just like, oh my god, like it's how? A memory. It's like your, a, uh, no, but not everybody gets that. Your ancestors no, I used to have butt <laughs> sex, and the, now you're feeling like phantom asshole pain from your from your yeah. ancestors. Comment below if you get a period and you also get asshole pains. Rogan's been a virgin for so long; she's having phantom sex pain. <laughs> <laughs> Her ancestors are literally like, well, she's not going to do it herself. We'll do it for her. Rogan's got Assassin's Creed Eagle Vision. What? <laughs> 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 the animus the fuck? <laughs> you know, I hope next time you have sex, you get an STD. <laughs> Oh, and you? What? I'm not even gonna say it. <laughs> All right, as long as I'm having sex, <laughs> we're good. <laughs> Listen, that was really good. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> Could you imagine? They're like, you're about to go and meet your ancestor. Bro, and goes. <laughs> 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 It's not funny. <laughs> oh man, is it not funny because you because you didn't understand what we were saying? You didn't, you didn't get it. Can we explain it to you? Let's explain it to you. Assassin's Creed is the first Arab video game ever. Okay, mm -hmm. Prince, of, Prince, well, of, Prince of Persia. That's 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 not Arab. That's Persia. Oh, you're right. Okay, that's Iranian. Okay, yeah. Assassin's Creed. You were from uh, you're from Syria. Okay, you know you're from Syria. <laughs> 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 I'm just, it's a joke. It's a joke. <laughs> bleep that. Anyways, yeah, seriously, bleep that. Bleep that with this. Yeah. We, she's going to bleep it with your face doing that? Or the noises? <laughs> yeah, the noises. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. That's the bleep for today. <laughs> That's too long of a bleep. You no, know, you need it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, anyways. So you go into a machine. And your assassin, like you were part of the Assassin's Creed, but it's a video game. It's the first era video game. And you go back and you relive your ancestors' memories so you can figure out where something is in the future, basically. Okay. They said that, like, the memories of your ancestors' instinct is trapped in the DNA of you right now because it's your technically it's your ancestors' memories. That's Assassin's Creed. So they put you in a machine. Like, it's, an, it's a machine that tracks your, like, lineage and, like, is able to reconstruct the memories of your past with... DNA. DNA, basically. essentially. That's, that's the premise of the game. But it's all Arab. So I'm saying, you go in the machine. I'm, I'm just explaining the joke isn't as funny. But you go in the machine. No matter what, it's not a funny joke. You feeling phantom sex pains from old ancestors <laughs> having sex is a good joke. It's, a very it's really not a funny joke. 
bars and tone. Okay. And we're back. We're back. Welcome we're back. We're back. Yeah, oh, wow. We were, able to, we were able to hash out our differences in the little break that we had there. Just, oh, Froggy. No. <laughs> I just swear to God. No, nah, she's mad. Are you Are you really that mad that I said you were having <laughs> Assassin's Creed she was, The other day, she she was, uh, Frogan, you're, you're the she. She was um saying, you know, it's impossible. It's hard. For, we, we were, it's hard for us to diss her. Or like <laughs> say anything bad about her, and now it's finally happening, and she's like regretting. Well, it's it. hard for her to be upset. Is, is that what you? What did you say? Or oh, make fun it's of not, Frogan? No, it's not, what do you mean? It's hard for her to be upset. Oh, 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 oh make fun of Frogan. Okay, yeah, I get it. I get it. Do you have anything you want to say to him? No. Apologize. To be fair, we did call him the boy in the striped pajamas. Yeah, you literally made fun of me for twenty minutes, and you guys called me the boy in the. You're striped making fun of me for being a virgin. That's a good thing these days. Both things can change. Yeah. Both things can. I can take off this shirt. So anyways, now <laughs> so now where do we go from here? Okay, let's start. Do, do let's, I have to jump in? Do I like make some make fun of me for something? You're involved in it too. What do you mean? You're not. You're not free from this. I don't think I am free. Yeah, you were laughing heavy. I, it was a good joke. Yeah, though. dude, you were laughing a lot that more. That was than a my good joke. joke. It was really good. Okay, because all I just imagined was her laying in the machine and then like. <laughs> <laughs> I can do two hours on this joke. I don't know. Number one, it, it involves around two things that are you have, funny. You have st- what do you have? What is that? What is it? Nothing. Okay. Nothing important. Okay. Here's the deal. Yeah. The most important thing. Let's get into our main topic of today because we have like an hour at least we have to talk about this shit. Sure. Okay. And we got all our jokes out. Mm-hmm. And then Fr- Frogan's, Frogan's in a very serious mood now, so this is a perfect time to get into a very serious topic. <laughs> so this is what we're going to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, you guys all watched Quiet on Set. You watched it. Yeah, you watched it. Yep. Okay, we all watched it. <laughs> I like that nod of. <laughs> well, Frogan, Frogan, saw, Frogan skimmed it. Fro- Frogan skimmed it. Fro- Frogan lived it. If anything, <laughs> Frogan, that was Frogan's past. Um. So, anyways, watching the show, nothing like. Obviously. Anyways, uh, <laughs> what do you guys think of it? What do you think of the doc? Mid. No, I'm just Mid? kidding. No, I'm just kidding. It was kind of boring. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> You didn't even watch it. <laughs> no, we yesterday. Whenever we were driving home, we watched the first episode. I would oh, did, did the first episode on when we were watching. We were on our way home. It was uh the it, like th- I I don't know. I, I I'm like it, off. It's obviously awful. It's obviously awful. But it's not like I felt like the documentary was like, oh, we kind of knew this. Yeah, when we were watching not the Drake it. Bell stuff. The Drake Bell the Drake stuff is Bell the stuff. The Drake Bell stuff was the new, the new, like, whoa, okay, I didn't know. But I also, like, I'm not going to lie, and this might make me seem like a shitty person. I kind of assumed. Why Hollywood's that fucked up? Is that because you worked in the industry? I mean, like, I've worked in the industry, but, like, I've never had, like, these kinds of situations. But, like, I've, like, I know, you know? <clears throat> Two of my friends that are actors. Uh, mm-hmm. But if you guys don't know, Quiet On Set is uh, a documentary that came out recently about a Nickelodeon. And like their golden era, you know, and their golden boy, who is Dan Schneider, mm-hmm. who is like their effective showrunner, producer, director, or writer. <laughs> and uh, it turns out he's, you know, you know, long story short, he's a fucking terrible human being. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're going to go through all of the other actors and actresses and uh, what what happened back in the day. Uh, but basically, it just just he had a, a extremely abusive um uh, set. Uh, he was making women massage him. Uh, he was like asking random women on the set to come and massage him constantly. Um, there's allegations of racism. He made two women split a fucking salary. Uh, he just was like cruel to people where he was like super nice and like super mean. Just abuse. Like to me, it just sounds like normal abuse. Like, you know? Yeah. Uh, um, and basically, normal abuse is a wild thing to say. I know, but like, <laughs> It just sounds like an abusive normal person. Abuse? I don't know. I don't know how to describe it, but he just, he was just a really shitty person. So right. we're going to go through, like, we're going to kind of do a deep dive today about, like, everything that has happened around it. We're going to go even deeper. We found some some clips uh, from, like, Tebow saying some stuff. But basically, like, watching the doc, for me, it was, uh, man, it fucked, it kind of fucked me up, like, a lot. Uh, the If you guys don't know, Drake Bell finally sat down and, like, talked about his allegations with abuse, and he was abused extremely badly, uh, where it went to court, and you had a bunch of celebrities vouching for the abuser. Um, and, uh, yeah, like, I watched it. The Drake Bell shit was wild. I think one of the 
the craziest things about that documentary is how the abuser, whose name is, uh, I think it was Brian Peck, he was just someone who worked on set. He was a dialect coach, and he worked with, like, Leo and stuff, apparently. And then he got Drake Bell, who was a child star at the time, uh, to kind of cut his dad out because his dad was his manager. And then he slowly was like, like he was just manipulative, you know? Mm. And it's kind of like the thing in the industry. Like the industry is like, it's always these people like pushing people like you don't, I know better for you, blah, blah. And then finally got him alone. And then like when he was able to get this child alone was abusing him. And it's super fucking disgusting. <clears throat> and then, but like, it was just bad because like his dad was one of the things that struck me in the documentary was that his dad was like, he calls his dad and he's like, hey, the guy went to jail. And he's like, oh, thank God. Like, he wasn't able to abuse you. And the mm -hmm. reason why he went to jail is because he was abusing him. I don't know. What would you, would you think of it, Raph? What would you think of it, Shrugging, from the stuff that you guys saw? So what came out, I think, I think what I saw on TikTok was a younger star that's anonymous still mm -hmm. is what took him to court. And then Drake Bell's case like, sealed the deal on that. And to date, we still don't know who the younger child star is. Oh shit! I didn't know that. Um, but yeah, it's <laughs> that's interesting because, like, in the documentary, it made it seem like that Drake's the reason why he went to court because they called the police on him th from like a situation that he had with Drake. <clears throat> I didn't watch it, but like I said, I saw it on TikTok. Okay, so it, it, it was all pieces together. Like everything oh, was, was like multiples. It was, a, it was a united. That front. makes sense. They had um. Drake, this other person, and police officers, like really grill, and Drake talks about this, like really grill him, yeah, about everything. It, so it was like Drake, this younger child star, and I, I'm sure there was another one. Sure, uh, it th they they were all coming together. They were they were building a case, uh, for the DA to just let, I think that's the right term to yeah. bring Brian back to justice. Yeah, what's crazy is he got hired after he gets convicted. 16 he, months in prison, gets hired on the sweet life of Zach and, of Cody. Zach and Cody. Was he was he in prison prison or was he just like out on bail? 16 months, you'd probably be like not in a, I think prison, you have to be, jail is like under two years or something like that. And then prison is over a certain, certain amount of years, you go to like prison. Right. Um. He's pro He probably went to prison, but for 16 months, that's, dude, that's fucking disgusting. The other thing about it, which was crazy to me is that like he gets rehired. Yeah. But what fucked me up about the doc is I remember him as a kid being the pickle guy. Yeah. Like I, his face was like on the show because was your, like you watched, did you, what, what did you watch anything of Nickelodeon back in the day? Yeah. All of that. I watched everything. All you that. All, all that. Show. Did you watch any of that stuff? Or were you like, all right, Carly Jen? Um, I can't really remember all that, but I did watch the Amanda show, stuff okay. like that. Um, I remember all that. Oh, that was my favorite. Keenan and Kel was technically my favorite show on all of Nick. Yeah. Keenan and Kel was my favorite. It was like, for me growing up, it was all that, Keenan and Kel. And I didn't really uh, watch the Amanda show as much. I think Keenan and Kel was kind of my thing. They didn't really touch on that at all. And this, I didn't remember Keenan and Kel being yeah, uh, maybe, talked about uh, Maybe at they all. just didn't get enough information or they, I, both of them didn't talk about it or whatever. <laughs> but like, yeah, the Amanda show uh, was... Uh, I remember, I remember the Amanda show. I remember the hot tub scenes mm -hmm. with like Dan and I remember her. those scenes. Yeah. You know, but like a lot of the jokes as a kid, I never really thought about like some of the jokes, like being sexual, yeah, but like for kids, I remember, I still remember watching like some of the cartoons today now mm -hmm. and there are sexual jokes in a lot of hundred percent. Oh, a yeah. lot of them. Dude. Like a lot. I remember Ren and Stimpy had like crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ren and Stimpy was in <laughs> For adults, let's yeah, be honest. Yeah. Ren and for adults. It would have been better suited for like a Nick at night, not Nick at night. Like a what's what's an adult? A Cartoon Network for adults or Adult Swim? Ren and Stimpy for on Adult Swim, yeah, sure. But it was on regular kids TV, right? But my thing is, like you know, when you're making these shows in mind, you're making them so that you know a family can watch them together. So they're trying to appeal to kind of both sides. So there's a lot of like, and I'm not defending any of the jokes or what the uh, really just inappropriate stuff done to to kids on these shows but for cartoons especially like a lot of the jokes have to like be funny for every audience yeah, and with so undertones and stuff like that as well because the idea is that oh we're gonna get like an older crowd the parents 
and the younger kids watching this kind of thing together. Yeah, but that's fucking weird. But it is weird, yes. Dan Schneider actually addressed it in the interview he did. He said that like the show is meant for kids, and like if the jokes really made anybody uncomfortable, he'll cut them out now. Yeah. So we're gonna we'll bring cut them that out up. Now? We'll bring that up because Dan Schneider responded to it. Um, but I kind of I made like a little organization of like clips and stuff. One of the ones that just recently came out was um uh Amber Frank who played Nickelodeon's Haunted Hathaways. I don't know if you guys ever watched that show. Haunted Hathaways. Uh, I, I just saw this. This is on Twitter, so I don't know, but we'll we'll post it like here. Haunted Basically, Hathaways. She said that Nickelodeon set uh, computers over, over to the production when they started uh, filming the show, and they were turned on, and there was CP on the computers, and nobody was held accountable. I want to know how a fucking work environment just has CP on the fucking computers. I mean, it, it, it is fucking weird, man. I think one of the biggest questions I have is like, should kids even be doing this shit? You know, should kids even be working this full time job? Because ninety percent of these fucking child actors come out of this fucked up. You know, like nobody is like, oh yeah, I really, really loved being super famous as a kid and not having a normal childhood. Yeah, I mean, like, and not being able to like relax and play video games with my friends. Right. Like, there is no kid that like leaves that environment and goes, so sick, dude. I loved being famous at twelve years old and working. Right. You know, my favorite part of childhood was having a was job. Was having a job, yeah. No, I I mean, I don't think it's sticky because like we obviously we need, you know, child actors for certain roles in certain movies. Otherwise we become very like limited as far as like what we can capture as far yeah. as on TV shows, everything goes, content. But they have to be heavily protected. That's the issue that I'm having with a lot of these sets is that there's according like according to SAG rules and according to just rules Which they in were general, not following. They well. were not following. Parents are always supposed to be within the same area as a child, with an eye shot, with an ear shot. Dude, they should never a hundred percent. Yeah. Like the fact that these kids were being left alone. There should be no instance where a child actor is in a room alone with an adult who's not their legal guardian. I was going to ask, like, do do I don't know of a situation where people leave their kids. Do you know of a situation where people leave their kids with an adult that they barely know? No, dude. In any situation, besides, like, maybe school? No, with, but, like, it's, uh, but it's, like, sucks because, you know, mm -hmm. I'm not saying that these parents were bad parents. It's, they get manipulated by the system as well. They're like, oh, we have to do this. Like, we got to take away from like, That's what was and fucked up. And they feel up. like, oh, if I, fuck, if I say no, I fuck up my kid's future. Yeah. And so, like, it's it's bullshit all the way around. It's awful, dude. It it's like one. It's, they kicked one parent. You they kicked one parent pretty much off of the set because she was like always like commenting like this is really weird that like why is this hap like that's weird that they're doing that to my child. This is weird. But then she's like, oh, I'm I'm being the I'm being the bad person. Let me just not say anything anymore. And it's about their child. It's it, like, come on. It was fucking. It was fucked, dude. It was like they basically just uh, like I remember uh. Drake Bell's dad, mm -hmm. they were like, uh, he called it out too. And they were like, oh yeah, like you're the being reason, you're being homophobic. Yeah, that's what it was. They like the guy was oh, touching him. Little, yeah. So basically he was touching him like a lot. <laughs> and then basically the dad was like, tell someone on set, like, I don't feel comfortable. I don't want that guy around my kid. Mm -hmm. And then basically they were like, well, you know, he's gay. So you're just being homophobic. Isn't that Which wild? is, it's crazy. What the fuck would you say, Rogan? <laughs> I wouldn't put my kid in a situation like that in the first place. I'm glad that we were able to fight and <laughs> play with these hypotheticals. <laughs> <laughs> no, we gotta do it. We gotta do it the same way. Huh. Um, we, to, we wanna role oh, play. Oh yeah. It? Oh my god. I don't wanna no, role play. No, I don't wanna role play. I don't wanna role play. It's such a difficult topic you No, can't. I know. But then so I um, I wanna kinda hop. I want this kid out of my no, I can't. <laughs> I wanna I wanna hop to to Dan Snyder's uh interview the very crazy tebow interview who's apparently on our why Carly. is tebow interviewing anybody i the don't understand why he's part of this motherfucker held a bagels on a stick and was like you want bagels for fucking like seven seasons and Who he didn't even put the bagels through the hole he like put them through the half yeah here's the thing guys capri's way too old for iCarly. iCarly is like i think it's like even barely our generation i feel like it's like no i remember when it came out it was like 2007 yeah, ish. I remember watching our Carly like. I watched our Carly. Um, 
with like Nickelodeon shows, I get kind of confused as to like what's my generation versus my sister's. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. But I yeah, was like I, the I, '90s generation. Like yeah, like Capri's too old. Well, I also here's the deal about Nickelodeon. I stopped watching it and started watching reruns and documentaries at like 14 years old. Mm. So I missed a lot. I've explained shit. so much about. Yeah, you know? I also watched Noggin, which would air episodes of Ghost Rider, which was like an <laughs> '80s show. So I was watching like 80 shows like in the 90s. I was really behind on a lot Yo, of shows. You know what, Easy you, Rider? You know what show fucked? Ghost Rider, dude. It fucked. No. Oswald. Oh, Oswald is good. You watch Oswald? The Squid? Yeah. No. Did you guys watch Boy Meets World? Yeah. It's I went to tragic. I went to school with Topanga. Dude, the principal was you my grandma. went to grandma's... school with Topanga? Yeah. I dead ass went to school with Topanga. Eerie. I swear to God. I a hundred. She lives in this area. The principal was my grandma's neighbor growing up. I saw the queen. I, no. I, I hung out with the panga. I swear to God. I own all a of, Boeing 747. Hold on, hold on. My, my grandpa owns no, all of Canada. I swear to This is a real thing. I went to school with Topanga. Okay. I went to school with Topanga. <laughs> and uh, at the time, I think <laughs> she, was super, she was super nice. Her and her boyfriend brought us all Starbucks at the end of her semester. It was college. Mm-hmm. I like that you had to say it was college. It was college. I didn't go to like middle school. But you went to, you went to college with Topanga. Yeah, I went to junior college with Topanga. Dude. Yeah, I love Topanga. She, she was, was very nice. She was my. She was. Uh, she Pango, was. A, if you're listening to this, she's married. And you're, and, oh, yeah. No, she was honestly very nice. I'm sick and tired of people being married. You can steal her. Nah, I can't do that. I'm not a good. I'm not a good theft. You know who is a good theft? Somebody's really good at stealing. Capri. Let me look at his prison outfit. It's fucked up. <laughs> Anyways, so uh, back to the Dan Schneider interview. Uh, I really want to show the Tebow clip where he goes, not cool, man. Yeah, let me see it. Before we talk about. Sure. I got to fix my shirt. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Frogan's just wearing a scarf today. She was doing laundry. And so she put on a scarf. It looks good. Good looking scarf. Y'all are <laughs> both insane. Jesus Christ. You guys are both insane. Sometimes we get a little thirsty. <laughs> and you have to rise a. Hello? Yeah, to censor for censoring reasons. For why? Because we, we don't, don't like because we're not sponsored. We don't want to represent any brands. We're not sponsored except for Happy no, Dad. No, blur that out. Honestly, blur out Happy Dad. Oh, the weird thing <laughs> this I thought is ironic. The okay. weird thing I thought about like, the Dan Schneider interview. Okay, fuck, I speak English today. The weird thing I thought about the Dan Schneider interview is the fact that like he put it on his own YouTube channel. So that motherfucker is collecting ad revenue. Oh my god, it is on his own Dan Warp. Yeah, he's yeah. Collect- Dude, you know what's crazy is it looks like a Nickelodeon set too. Like I was looking at this, I'm like, this is so fucking. It is uncanny. a Nickelodeon set. I just want to know why he got Tebow of all fucking people. Like- this is oh, a that, set, dude. That- where he did the interview. No, that's probably Dan's house, honestly. It looks like a set though. It's that insane. looks like Dan's house. It looks like his house. I mean, he has a thirty million dollar mansion. Oh, does he really? Yes. Oh, fuck. I well, mean, they they he they bought him out for seven million or seven, something like that for from Nickelodeon to step down. Let me let me play this. Know. Not oh, cool, shit. man. This is one of the most like lot. insane clips of it. Um, mm-hmm. Video Village or wherever they happened, because there were lots of people there who witnessed it who also may have felt uncomfortable. So I owe them. Also, Tebow, the way he's talking to him is like it's a puff piece. He's like, you've written so many shows. Yeah, he's glazing thousands the of episodes. You're such a smart man. How could you just, you only fucked up a couple of times with kids. It's like, what the fuck, dude? Apologies, well, yeah. We're not there yet, but there's a point where he's oh, like, on, I, don't wanna, I don't wanna, I don't wanna speak on anybody's story. I don't wanna talk about anybody's experiences. But then like, you know, you're not doing them any fucking justice. Like, this is what they're saying. Stop being like, I don't wanna speak on any of their experiences. Just say, hey. This is what happened to them. It's true if it's what happened to them. Yeah, but why didn't he present himself for the doc? Why is he doing it here? Because I mean, he's glazing him up. He's not... Because he knows that he could control it here? Yeah, 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 yeah. Hold on. Yeah. Let me play this. It's probably, getting, it's probably paid by fucking Dan, honestly. Dan, talk to me about the writer's room. From what I saw, not cool. No, <laughs> no. and I, I'm- it, You can't help but laugh. He literally told a woman to bend Not over and cool. tell the story as if she's getting fucked. Yeah. And thought that that was a joke. Yeah. That's insane. And his response is what? Like, I can cut right to the chase. Let me just say, no writer should ever feel uncomfortable in any writer's room. Ever. Oh, really? Period. The end. No excuses. Great. Um, most TV writers, comedy Can I say writers, something? He looks like a fucking Muppet. He looks, I was going to say, he looks like a Mr. Meaty character. Dude, he looks fake. He doesn't look like a real human. I think it's because he was like on the set as a childhood. I just thought he was an actor. I didn't know he was like as a kid. I didn't know. 
don't know what the roles are. Yeah. You know, so like I was like, oh, he's just like an actor who's always on the set. He was actually the fucking producer screaming at people. Dude, th- this interview is insane. Like, not cool, man. Really fucked up, dude. You're being silly. You're being a little silly right now. It's really bad. It's really bad. I. Yeah, I don't like I, I just I don't understand when the, uh, obviously the interview is to make it to be like, oh, Dan's going to speak out about what's happened. And but like, you know, when you do that. It doesn't help your case ever. You yeah. Know? And then Tebow uh, goes on, which I don't know if a lot of people know about this. Uh, uh, producer Scoot sent this over to me, but basically he. Tebow, who's interviewing him, mm-hmm. slips up on a stream three years ago. He was on a stream with someone, uh, and he says he talks about his own experiences on the set with racism when Michelle Obama apparently came onto the set. Mm-hmm. Uh, that he was like not written into the episode, and he was the only black character or black actor on the episode. Not character, but he's a human, you know, actor. Right. And uh, basically, when he was on the fucking set. He was like written out of that episode and he was like, what you're going to have like the first African-American like black, you know, first lady and you're not going to have me like it's just gonna be a bunch of white people on the fucking set. Mm -hmm. So there's just more and more coming out about him that Mm -hmm. like not only did he not protect marginalized people because that's was talked about. He didn't protect women, you know, because he had basically women on set who were uh, the women on set were, you know, we were. We talked about that, that he made them split a salary, mm-hmm. which you were telling me earlier is like standard industry standard or something. Like I don't know that. if it's not, it's not so much now from what I understand, but the back, back in the early two thousands. Yeah. Kind That's of, fucking you, you, would, you would use, you would split a salary to get two writers to come in. And, but the thing is like, if they accept the split, they accept the split, you know, it's all good. They're still being taken advantage of 100%. Um, but that's not like an unheard of thing back then. It's crazy yeah, though. I mean, and he even addressed it in the interview with. Uh, how did the how did how do how did the Writers Guild not fucking squeal and yell and be like, "This is fucked up"? Well, they did after it was reported. Yeah, because it's fucked. They did a whole internal. In- they did a whole investigation when it was reported by one of the writers. She reported. She ended up reporting him. They do a whole investigation. And say mm-hmm. you can't do. You can't. What are you doing? You can't do that. No, that's insane. Well, that well, what I'm what more what I was asking you is that like it's more common than you would think. It's more common than you would think, but a lot of it's it's all under the table. Mm. You know, it's obviously like you know, SAG after a got Writers Guild rules, you can't split somebody's pay. Mm-hmm. So it's everything that's done like that is all under the table. They're like, we're gonna hire you, but we're gonna split your pay. You're being upfront. If they say, okay, fine. We accept, then they accept the split pay, and that's on them. Yeah, but it's still manipulation, and it's still like because you're getting these writers who have nothing. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're getting these writers who have been working their hardest to just have an opportunity. So when you t- when you exploit that opportunity, hmm? that's me. That's me. I'm so sorry. When you exploit that opportunity, you're you're not you're not doing anybody any justice. You're you're literally. Uh, I mean, that's the thing is like the writers get paid the least amount, right, on the set, like. Writers, not always, but yeah. Like writers on a song, they get the most amount of money. The writers on set, they don't get anything. Why'd you throw your mic? Why'd you throw your mic down? Oh, oh, okay. It looks like you were about to square up for a second. I mean, I did see something. You completely changed the topic. What'd you say? What'd you say? I don't remember at this point. What did you say? What did you say? I was talking about how. Actually, I remember how in the interview they addressed the split salary thing, and then he just randomly started talking. I don't recall that. I'm sorry. Apologize. What, uh, what uh, regarding regarding what though? Because we're talking about the split salary. Um, in the interview, he started talking about how during like the split th- salary allegations, he was like, it was a common practice amongst amongst Nickelodeon shows. It wasn't just for women. And he said it happened on two other shows. One was with between two men, and one was between a man and a woman, which obviously doesn't make it right. No, that's but what like, I'm saying. That's yeah. insane. But that's what, yeah, that's also what we're talking about. No, that I know. it was common practice. I know. I'm just cool. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyways, the uh, thank you. Moving to the Drake stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, the craziest thing I remember about the doc, fucking crazy, is that when Drake goes to court and basically attacks or, or gets the uh, the abuser. Uh, 
what was his name? Something Bell. Uh, Brian Peck. Brian Peck. Mm-hmm. Uh, major celebrities wrote letters on behalf of the abuser, like James Marsden, uh, Taron Killam. Uh, Taron Killam is the guy from uh, SNL. Yes. He was also on All That and other Dan Schneider shows. Mm-hmm. Was he really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. He was a uh, crazy... Steve? No. No. Don't put that shit on Jerry Trainer. It was Jerry oh, Trainer, no, right? That's Jerry Trainer. He Trainor. was someone insane in Drake and Josh, though. He was a bully or something. Um, maybe. I don't really remember. I don't know. I'll be honest with you. Uh, back then, uh, names of actual human beings weren't like the forefront of my memory and mind. Jerry Trainer protected the kids. So Dan Schneider used to record uh, vlogs on set of different shows. And you could see, like, in these vlogs, like, uh, Jerry Trainer would be, like, intervening as much as possible whenever Dan is, like, going up to them or, like, touching them or, like, trying to get them to say weird shit. But, yeah. That, he, that's the, the vlogs that you're talking about. I miss that. That would have been your shit. Because, like, I never saw those vlogs. I never watched any of that shit. I, I didn't. I, I didn't want to go on the internet to watch those. I showed you some briefly yesterday. Yeah, I remember the ones you showed me are the only ones I've seen. I yeah. never like actually go, went out of my way to go online and look at the YouTube vlogs that he was doing. But yeah, he had like a shitload of vlogs, and even on Victorious uh, Psychowitz, I think is his name, the teacher. Yeah, would also do the same thing. Like he would intervene, and like even in some of the vlogs, you could see like Liz Gillies who played Jade, like. Mm-hmm touch ariana to like warn her that dan was coming and then like you'd see ariana grande like pull her dress over her knees um like shit like that or like one time they were like next to a fan because it was hot on set and then liz was like oh we're being filmed and uh avon who played oh fuck the hot one from victorious i can't remember his name logan or something jade's boyfriend yeah um he had a shirt up and like she was trying to get him to pull his shirt down because Dan was recording. Like they would like actively watch out for each other on set whenever he was like doing his stupid vlogs because he'd like do weird shit. Mm-hmm. I didn't know he had his own vlog, which is insane. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think it's on the, his YouTube they just channel feel actually. Like, when I watched them, like they felt like fucking creepy snuff videos. Well, that's what they were kind of, you know, at, like, in the long run. It's what they ended up being. Like the one where Ariana Grande is pouring water on herself is fucking yeah, that, disturbing. That was just, no. I don't because I was watching when I when that kind of came up like on clips and stuff like that like when I saw it, like kind of circulating on tic- TikTok or Instagram I was like I don't remember this at all in the show I don't remember this I don't remember these scenes from being in the show at all and then when I find out oh they're from like the online vlogs yeah. I'm like oh well because that's a lot of his shows like the the ones that were like digital like web based for example like mm-hmm. the Amanda show like there's a whole Amanda show archive that has weird shit on it mm-hmm. from the Amanda show from. Penelope Taint's vlog blog she would do of Amanda. Right. Oh yeah, that was in the thing though. Mm-hmm. Her name was like Taint, and they were like, yeah. "Take that out." And then he was like, "Oh no, it's just like tainted." And it's mm-hmm. like, yeah. But even with iCarly, like iCarly was also a web based show, so there's like these vlogs, and like Victorious had the, um, like the whole premise of the show is, oh, I thought it was a blog. Like they have like pair phones, and they have like t- a Twitter version, so like they'd like. Uh, tweet their shit out during the show so like they recreated stuff like that yeah Um, even with Sam and Kat too like cause um, so basically a lot of people think that like I don't want to say the main victims besides like Amanda Bynes were Ariana Grande and mm-hmm. Jeanette McCurdy who played so Je- Jeanette McCurdy was Sam from iCarly Ariana was Kat Valentine from Victorious and then it got to a point where he made a show with both of them together mm-hmm. Kat and Sam Sam and Kat was a show. And uh, Jeanette McCurdy was the one that released the book that I, I'm glad mm-hmm. my mom died and everyone got so mad at her. Yeah, and nobody got mad at her. Everyone nobody supported her. No, no, her. there was people on the internet that were like, this is so disgusting. You're talking about you're glad your mom died. Like a, a bunch of right-wingers were mad at her. Oh, from, from fucking oh. the title. Yeah, yeah. weirdos. Were, yeah, weirdos from the, but, just reading from the, the title. title yeah. Even, I haven't read the book, but I've heard excerpts from it, but Nickelodeon offered her $300,000 of hush money. They're like, we'll give you $300,000 cash if you don't talk about any of your experiences on the Nickelodeon sets. Nah. And she was like, yeah, I'm not taking that. And I, she wrote that book. Can I tell you, can I tell you guys nothing. Something? I know. Can Fuck I t- those guys. Can I tell you guys something that You're I- wearing a Nickelodeon uh, fucking uh, mic thing, so fuck you. I'm not Nickelodeon. I <laughs> yeah. just like orange. You're fuck you. Do you Why do you like orange so much? 
Because Dan Schneider. And you like feet too. Oh my God. Why? I was going to say the feet mm-hmm. thing. The feet thing. The feet thing fucked me up because he has like a foot fetish thing. Yeah. And he like, and the logo as a kid was always feet. And I remember the the orange foot. Like that was like my childhood. And then I was like, oh my God, I literally have been like watching foot fetish shit. Like that was fucking disturbing. But uh, one of the things that I didn't talk to you guys about before, but I, I'm recalling it now, is that do you recall the Puff Piece documentary that Nickelodeon dropped? Like, six months ago when Jeanette McCurdy's book came out, maybe like a year ago, mm-hmm. they have a documentary about how awesome Nickelodeon is. And it's out on, I believe Hulu mm-hmm. called the orange years. I think it's called oh, the yeah. orange years. Mm-hmm. And it's all about how women were empowered at Nickelodeon and how it's like an awesome set to work there. And it was fucking sick. It was right when the Dan Schneider stuff was coming out. The, the orange documentary and it's like a fucking puff piece and it came out like oh it came out three years ago but this is right when Jeanette McCurdy stuff was coming out I believe mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it's just Jeanette a, McCurdy's book came out last year okay but like I remember hey, stuff was coming out came out last two year, years ago two three years, two years ago. ago at this point google the release it, I know it's fairly recent so this came out in 2020 yeah, that's about after. the time that her book came really? out. Yeah, because I think it came out over COVID. I feel like it came out twenty twenty one. I want to say. Pull it up. Pull it up, Capri. I am. So her book came out in twenty twenty two. This documentary came out in three years ago in twenty twenty. Mm-hmm. But I remember that there was already rumblings of what had happened. Like, yeah, because Amanda Bynes came out about it in twenty sixteen. Um, Didn't she, she have a fake Twitter or something? Yeah, so she had a Twitter under I'll pull it up as well. uh, an alias, I think. Ashley I want to say something. Ashley Banks. Ashley Banks. Where she talked about, like, imagine getting pregnant at 13 years old and having to get an abortion by your by your boss and being touched by your dad. Like, it was, like, outlandish shit. And people didn't believe it was her, but she also tweeted a picture of her driver's license, which proved it was her because her she was under conservatorship so people like she obviously didn't have control of her accounts or anything so she had that secret account where she just like aired a lot of things out um but even then like this is like such a bad way to describe it but people were saying that like dan schneider is going to be fine at the end because the people that like are like genuinely fucked up by him have like chemical lobotomies like they're gone chemical what lobotomies oh like they're just like yeah they're gone just so like on antidepressants is that what like so drugged up. up basically uh so the the three things that she said that she claimed this is from like a tweet but basically that her parents and lawyers ran the verif- her verified twitter account so this was her second account right which is this which is normal under conservatorship 100 mm-hmm. like, that they they do that uh she had no control of her money uh basically her family stole it from mm-hmm. her apparently conservatorship and then she claims that her hairspray co-star john travolta is a sexual molester uh, I can confirm. Uh, basically, this person's also saying that there's stories about him being a creep, which there's always been rumblings about John Travolta. There's always been rumblings about John Travolta. For a long fucking time. Hey, Sandy. He also creeps me the fuck out. He's got the Michael Jackson look now. Like, he looks like Michael J. He looks like Ronald McDonald. He fucking creeps me out. Um, But basically, uh, she was tweeting stuff on the, her account like, you know, my parents are the ones tweeting on the Amanda Bynes deleting this account please play for my freedom and a chance to have control over my finances um just like fucked up shit dude what uh yeah white privilege at its best john travolta is a sexual molester Mm -hmm. or sexual monster Mm -hmm. uh it bothers me that john travolta is not being treated like bill cosby so right now so she had a podcast last year and i think she canceled it because she wasn't getting enough a-list uh, celebrity guests i think she just brought it back because she was able to get one yeah but I know now she is trying to get her manicurist license and she wants to do nails. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. So, I mean, the thing is, man, like, like I said, at the beginning of this pod, it's like the, like the dangers on set, like the dangers of working as a child, it's just like fucking dangerous, man. Like the, a lot of these people, like, look, look at how, how many like child actors are fucked up. Like the, a lot of them are like, they are fucked up. And it's like really screwed up to be like, yeah, just like, I know that we have to have this entertainment, but like, what's the harm is really bad. You know, the harm is really bad. I'm like, 
I, I watched uh, Alexa Nicholas's uh, response to Dan Schneider's uh, interview on her YouTube channel, and she was just like, nobody reached out to me. Why what are is you- that? She's she was the one on um Zoe 101. Oh. The one I showed you earlier, this one. Which one? Oh, the one who um No, that's Tebow. Oh, the one on the bottom right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She basically said that like she played the um on Zoe 101. I think she played She was also in the doc. Because there was the smart one, there was Zoe, who was like kind of like in between, street smart and just in between, right? And then there was the one who like only wanted to like hang out with like boys and like do all that stuff and like wear like uh, whatever whatever the fuck she was that one yeah uh so she basically said um she basically said uh that like Tebow didn't reach out to her but the first thing he did was reach out to fucking Dan Schneider yeah which is like okay cool like you're not going to reach out to the kids that were affected like what the fuck is your problem like Dan not cool man Let's do this fucking puff piece on your on your YouTube channel. Does he work for Insider? Is that what you guys were saying? Or someone said that? What is he? Think work? He works for THR. He works for THR. What's that? Uh, Hollywood Reporter. Tebow does. I, well, it wasn't Hollywood Reporter interview, so oh. it was at the very least contracted by them to do the interview. Oh, interesting. Maybe maybe because he was the act. He was actually the only one probably at the Hollywood Reporter that has worked with Dan Schneider personally. Well, it was why would that YouTube. be on? Dan Schneider's YouTube. Yeah, why channel, would it be though? on his personal YouTube? If it was, is Hollywood- it also on the Hollywood Reporter YouTube? Because he might have just re-uploaded it. I don't know. It it was released on the Hollywood Reporter's Twitter page. So then, oh, so oh, but was it linked though, or was it? No, it was just on their Twitter. Oh, they just uploaded the video. Yeah, I think that's where it was premiered first. Oh, okay. So then he probably just re-uploaded it to his own YouTube for views and for monetization. It's fucking crazy. Imagine man. making money. <laughs> can we? Is there a way we can see if that his video is being monetized? Yeah, if you go into the source code, it's a line of code. Do you know what the line of code is? Because uh, yeah. if he's trying, if he if he's monetizing off of that interview, then uh, he deserves to go to fucking prison. Well, the comments has turned off. Did um, you get an ad? No. Well, I I have a uh, YouTube. Switch the Arabs. He has my YouTube Premium. Yeah. Hold on. He's my YouTube Premium. Got that YouTube Premium. He's got my YouTube Premium. Frogan. Refresh. Frogan. Something about Capri uh, that happened recently. Um, Capri did this thing where he got my YouTube premium. Really? Mm-hmm. Uh, th- it doesn't look like there's ads, but I can't tell. It would have popped up right away. Yeah. So he's not monetizing. Okay, well, good. At least. I mean, yeah, he's done, he's done one thing good. I mean, the interview was just a puff piece like, oh, I didn't mean to do anything, and I'm, I'm sorry, and going in the future, well, you know, but fuck you, dude. Fuck him. It, if anyone employs him now, like it sounds like he's trying to make a comeback. If anyone employs him now, this is a contentious podcast because it's a fucked up situation. You know, we were talking about like serious issues. But if anyone employs that piece of shit now, you're his ass doesn't need to work ever again. That's yes, the sad part about a, it. Yes, a thirty does. million dollar house. That's the sad part about it is that he's trying to work again. You know, and it's like it's just weird for me looking at him because he's such a fucking. It's like when Kramer did the racist shit. Yeah. It's like you can't take him seriously. Yeah. I can't take Dan Schneider seriously because, like, to me, he's a fucking clown. Mm-hmm. You know? It's like I can't take this seriously. I can't take, like, he just looks like not a real human. He looks like a fucking mup. It's also because I grew up watching those shows. But it, like, sucks because it's, like, literally the, the fucking I grew up watching fucked up shit. Like, basically child exploitation, you know? But there's some real, there's some great people that came out of those shows, like fucking Keenan and Kel. Like, yeah, uh, those guys are great. Yeah, didn't someone didn't like another show talk shit? Or are we not talking about that? We can talk about it. Uh, so basically, uh, the stars from Ned's The Classified School Survival Guide. Um, I forgot their fucking names. Ned, the girl, and the guy with the go go gadget glasses. <laughs> I don't fucking remember their names. Okay. Uh, they basically were making fun of um the Quiet On Set documentary, um, but like at the end of the day, they're irrelevant. Well, they, they basically were just like making, you know, bad. I don't know how to say this without getting demonetized or whatever. I don't really care about monetizing this. Bad episode, jokes. I was gonna say like fucking jokes about doing just stuff whatever. To kids. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I mean, their podcast is literally about the only success they've ever had in their lives as teenagers. 
it's fucked. And they're be- pushing 50. It's fucked. Like, okay, if you make a joke or if we make a joke, it's fucked up, right? It's already fucked up. But you were there during that time. That's like, it adds levels of fuck up, Ari. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Like, you know, like, you, <laughs> I would be like disgusted to be like, the company I work for was fucking abusing other people. And to make that joke, it's like even worse. So it's, that's more fucking insane. Because there's people like making. Were they on Nickelodeon? That's mm-hmm. classified? Okay. Yeah, I never watched that show. I didn't. You I, were too old for it. I missed the victorious iCarly. I knew iCarly. I you knew were I you were in college enough for that shit came yeah. out. Yeah, yeah. Well, no. Uh, yeah, I was. I well, iCarly came out in what 2007. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I was in college. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like in my first year of college. <laughs> Damn. Old. You know, I met Drake Bell. Did you? I did. We'll throw up a photo right here. It was a. Uh, it was like. It's like an ad lib ass situation. Okay, it was 2018. I was in LA for the first time. Did you say ad lib ass? Well, okay. Yeah, you'll understand. Okay, no, I got it. Um, so I, I went to Politicon, which is a political convention, to watch mm-hmm. Hassan Piker debate Charlie Kirk. Mm-hmm. And after I left the debate, I met Hassan for the first time, and then I left the debate to go to a concert. And on my way out, I saw Drake Bell there. And I was like, I was glitching. I was like, I was like, is that Drake Bell? And then I dead ass asked him. I was like, are you Drake Bell? He's like, yeah, I am. I was like, can I get a picture? He's like, yeah, sure. And I took a picture. and just walked away. And then I got in my Uber and I was just like, what the fuck just happened? I was like, what is this guy doing here? A Politicon? Yeah, he was at Politicon. I'm he, just chilling. No, he was watching the debate. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, that's yeah. Sick. He was watching the son Charlie Kirk debate. That's sick. But yeah, I met him. Dom was friends with Josh for a while. Peck. Like they mm-hmm. were cool for like a week. Can be mean, huh? It's really mean. No, 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 no. no. Hold no, on a second. No, no, Hold on no, a second. No, no, no. no. Don't. How mean? Very mean. Is it like? Is it like bad mean? It's like insulting his physical looks, but not in the way that you think I'm gonna go. <laughs> I don't want to know. He just has dead eyes. Okay. That's oh, okay. Fine. Ooh, thank God. Yeah. No. Like Jesus Christ. <laughs> we were all fucking stressed out. Dude, this whole like episode is so stressful because it's like talking about. We're like situation. trying to like teeter like a very fine line with everything that we're doing. Well, Even that's all I said earlier about CP. I was like, fuck, man, I really like this is, this is going to sound so wrong. Well, dude, that's the thing is like it's such a fucked up topic, but it also like for me, it hits home because it was like Nickelodeon was such a fucking big part of my childhood. Mm. You know, like, dude, did you ever watch Guts? That sounds so familiar. Do you remember Guts? Do you have it? Guts. Do, 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 do you have it? And then they climbed the aggro crag. It was like a bunch of countries. Israel was in there. There was a bunch of countries, and they fucking would fight each other to like do like a mini Olympics, and then they would climb this this fucking rock at the end, and they would get a big piece of the rock. You ever watch Guts? It sounds very familiar. okay. Or like figure it out, or like Wild and Crazy Kids. You ever watch that shit? Figure it out sounds familiar. Figure it out was sick. Figure it out. One of the guys from Figure It Out was on the dock. But he he didn't say anything of like really substance, and I don't think anything happened on his sets. Hmm. Figure it out was like the ones where you would have a kid come on, and he would have a special talent, and then he would put they would put on a board, and then basically the kid, oh I remember that show, yeah, and then they did like Wild Style, mm-hmm. and uh, it was uh, like or like Double Dare, Double Dare was like Double the, Dare, I Double Dare the set of that like the guy was it seemed cool like everything was normal with that. You know, I applied to be on a Nickelodeon show. Which, Which one? show? Uh, the the game show one I can't fucking remember what it's called. There's so many. Oh, uh, the uh, mystery of the hidden temple. No. Oh, no. I love Legends of the Hidden Temple, dude. Dude, you put the monkey together. Yeah. I forgot, but it's like the one they had like the board on the ground and like you'd step on it. Oh, the pattern one. Yeah. Oh. Um. No, I don't remember that one. I, I remember watching it. I don't remember the, the name of it. The yeah. board on the ground. I yeah. my first my first like film TV audition was Nickelodeon. Was it? Mm-hmm. What was it? Uh, oh, you lived in Florida. Did you ever go to the set? No. Damn. That, as a kid, that's where I really wanted to go. But my parents were too Arab to take me to Florida. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, no. I remember we went in, and I think it was it was it was like a big like cattle call casting call. They were just trying to find like unique looking or unique acting kids and shit like that. that. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say that's a really insane thing to say. Unique we need looking. weird looking kids. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you have kids from like different backgrounds or whatever. Look, like, everyone's unique looking, so just they wanted uh, something unique. They were trying to get diversity on their show. They were trying to get that. diversity on the show. That's fucked. I remember I wore a fucking I was really into Kangol hats back then. What's, What's that? A Kangol hat. Like a Kangol? You know, like you know, like the fucking like uh what's the way to fucking explain it? 
<sighs> like a like a newsboy hat or like a uh, like a Peaky Blinder hat. Oh, okay. But like the cool ones, the you ones were that a like fedora kid. No, not a fedora, a Kangol. <laughs> Samuel L. Jackson wears uh, them a lot. I know what a Kangol is. It's, it's like a it's flat. Like, it's a flat. No, 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 no. Flat Eas- easier way to say it. What cab driver hat? Sure. Yep. Whatever. Old, old, a newsy hat. Old golfer hat. Oh, see, get up there. Type, type in Samuel L. Jackson Kangol. Have these chairs gotten uncomfortable? If you're gonna have the laptop, you have to you have to piece to what we all want to fucking look up. Got him. Samuel L. Jackson's Kangols. No, Kangol. C K A N G O L. He's gonna type something racist in and show it to me. I know he is. No, I'm not. I just yeah. I, I know what hat this is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you were how old wearing those? Ah, uh, dude. High school, fourteen. I only wore it, I only wore it a couple times because I was like, oh, this cat's kind of stupid. Dude, I loved Nickelodeon. Big time rush. Wow! Uh, oh, oh. It's crazy that Big Time Rush was Nickelodeon too. Dude, Nickelodeon fucked them. That's why they had to go on hiatus for ten fucking years. Well, what did they do to them? They wouldn't sell Big Time Rush to them, so they couldn't like make music under them. Uh, imagine ha- owning a bit, like having a band, and then going to Nickelodeon to do a show about the band, and then Nickelodeon's like, "No, we still own you." No, like Nickelodeon created Big Time Rush, but they also were like a real music band, like. Uh, so they had the pilot in 2009. It was successful. They started going on tour in 2000. Well, their first tour was 2011. I went to the first tour ever and they were selling out like arenas, uh, in 2011, 2012, 2013. That was the end of the show. They weren't allowed to do anything under the name big time rush. Um, and they were at their like peak of their careers because like it was like boy bands on the rise, like one direction even opened for them at one point. Um, but yeah, then they weren't allowed to do anything until, 2021 i think they finally bought the rights to big time rush which is why they're back now uh but like during that time they had to they were like doing their solo shit like they couldn't do anything big time rush related that's crazy i mean to be honest thank god that they almost lost it because they're fucking zionists now kendall just had a baby who's kendall my favorite i love him the good one yeah i mean he hasn't said anything about palestine He's a hippie bitch. Mm. He's a he's a hippie ass bitch. But no, like even then, it was like crazy. But yeah, that's crazy. I mean, for me, I don't. I like. I don't know of any like stars that really came out besides like Keenan or Kel. Which one's Kel? Which one's Keenan? No, no, Keenan's the one Kenan, that's Kenan. on SNL right Kenan's now. Keenan's on SNL. Yeah, yeah. And Ke- like Keenan came out of there, but like some of the other ones, like I just don't remember. John, Johnny Tsunami I bumped into. Did you ever watch those? But that was Disney Channel. No, I never really watched Johnny Tsunami. I so when we posted I only our last, watched Disney Channel for That's So Raven. We posted our last clip about beans and yeah. that did well. And basically people were responding to our clip about like other child actors, like where they're now. And like I wanted to go through that. Um, yeah. and uh I don't have all of them, but I remember someone said Oh yeah, I live in Colorado and Johnny Tsunami works at a restaurant that I go to all the time. <laughs> which is crazy because I have only seen one child actor five times and it's Johnny Tsunami. Mm-hmm. I've seen Johnny Tsunami. Uh, I used to see him in Santa Barbara all the time. Yeah. And then I saw him at the beach one time at a fucking sushi spot. And mm-hmm. I like have bumped into him like three or four times. Do you think he remembers you? Yeah. He, no, he's he knows you're the reason why he's working at a restaurant in Colorado now. Well, no, he's really pissed off. He's like, I could have stayed in California, but that son of a bitch, Capri, he did this. Yeah, thing. yeah, motherfucker. You know who else I saw? Mm-hmm. I saw Rufio from Hook. Yeah. No, you don't know what that is. Okay, don't give me that Rufio. face. Rufio. One of the best fucking Didn't kids Rufio movies of all also... time. Rufio also... No, somebody else. I saw him at Knott's Berry Farm, and that was a yeah, great day I of my life that. because that was one I like of my favorite movies. Is it true that Knott's Berry Farm is like a crackhead central? Yeah, there was a shooting in the front of it the other day. I saw a video. Oh, really? Is it like a year-round thing? Okay, can I tell you something about knots? No, not yet. I saw a video the other day of a guy like literally tweaking out in knots. Like he was like dozing off. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. What what else happened? That's it. They're just recording him like. Oh, just sleeping? No, like dozing off like he's on drugs. Oh. Yeah. I doze off too. No, like he was like. He was like. There's, so he's falling there's, asleep? there's rankings. He's standing up. There's rankings oh. of danger for theme parks. Okay? Okay. okay. Disneyland is so safe, white people ride the bus. Okay. <laughs> That's how safe Disneyland is. 
Okay. Right? It's the only place. Is that why Scooters loves it so much? Yeah, he's like he's like the first time he's ever ridden a bus as a white person. He's like he gets on the bus. He's like. <laughs> <laughs> not true. He lived in he lived in Boston and New York. He's okay, a, New York. He rides the subway. He doesn't ride the bus. Can I be honest, you rode the bus. Yeah. I never rode the bus. <laughs> really? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. The, the bus sucks. The Dude, bus does suck. But I, I rode the bus. Wore, wore I rode the bus in New York, and I got I rode it, and I got kidnapped. <laughs> no, I got grounded that day. Like I sat on the seat, and my feet were fucking dangling. I remember it's very particular. I was like, fuck. I was like, I might be kind of short. It was like recently. It was like in June. Oh, I thought you meant like the bus driver grounded you. Like I thought no. you got in trouble by your parents. Yeah, that's what I thought. No, no, no. I meant like you meant so like you got grounded. Yeah. So, uh, for well, not really because your feet were dangling above. I the used ground. to ride the bus everywhere when I was a kid because I didn't have my license until I was eighteen. Fuck! I hated taking the goddamn bus. But here's the thing, I I rather I would rather like take the school bus in the morning than have my dad take me to school. Mm-hmm. But there was one time where I was like walking. It was like six o'clock in the morning. Saw a man walking. I ran back home. I was like, yo, dad, you gotta take me to fucking school. Like, he he literally didn't care about taking me to school. Like, he was like, whatever. But I just wanted the experience. Of riding on a bus? Yeah. Yeah, riding on the, the bus rides are the awful. best ones. Because I'd always be the first on the bus. I'd sit in the back. I'd have my headphones on. I'd listen to music for 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. Peace. I mean, you're lucky you were able to sit in the back. There was a huge dichotomy of people. So you had to, like, it, there's a social class on the bus. So maybe you didn't really experience the bus like. Uh, oh no! Here's the thing: did. I forced myself in the back because. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. That's fine. In my in my in my there's a there's there's a social structure to riding the bus, especially in middle school and high school. Mm-hmm. What is it? Uh, not cool sits at the very front. Who gives a shit sits in the middle. All the cool kids are in the back. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah. Here's the thing: I would literally go to the so where I lived, I could either go to the first, second, or third. Hmm. I went to the first stop because I wanted a good seat in the morning. Mm-hmm. Imagine being an emo Arab. I can't. I'm looking at one. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine that amongst other Arabs. What did you do? Hang your hijab in front of your face like this? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no. My daily fits would be skull dresses, Doc Martens. And like I had, the, I remember I had this cardigan that had like studs on the sleeves and the back had a spine on it. But yeah, I mean like nobody would fuck with me, but like some people would like make fun of me in passing. I'd be like, "You're a fucking bitch!" Like K word yourself. I was a, I had a very weird like. Did you go cool. to a school with a bunch of Arabs? My entire high school was Arabs. Yeah, that's weird. With a see, sprinkle of white see, people and a yeah, sprinkle. Of, I, I imagine I was I was I was all white and w- me. Five black people, five Arab people, and like five Asian people, and that was in the whole school was like white as fuck. No, I'm telling you Sick. right now, in my yearbook, there's like 17 pages of of Bazzi. Oh, okay. like Bazzi, the last name Bazzi. Oh, yeah, like it's literally all Arabs. Love that. I don't know that last name very well. You you have explained it to me. It's not like something that comes up. Yeah, it's my last name. Uh, the biggest last You're not name. Not Rogan Pazzi. Yes, I am. Yes, you are. So the biggest last name is. Uh, I'm not even gonna say it. No, I'm, what? Can you say it? Can you believe it? Yeah, the biggest uh, Christian last name that I know is. Why do we have to believe it? Who's the biggest last? What's name? the biggest non-Christian Arab last name? Johnson. Like, what do you mean non-Christian? <laughs> Muslim, yeah. <laughs> Muslim, I don't know. The can biggest, I ask my the mom? big, yeah. Ask your mom. The biggest Arab last name is. They own the Palms. The, the palm, and yeah. then they own the the what's the uh? Well, they used to. They sold them both. That's called. The reason why it. the reason why I don't want to fucking say it on the pod is because I am also that last name, but like distantly. My grandma is. It's all about distance. Hey, mm-hmm. hey. we're recording the podcast right now. All right. What would you say is the biggest Muslim Lebanese last name? Muslim or Lebanese? Bezzi. Lebanese. <laughs> Bezzi. Beijing. What about Muslim? What about Muslim? I don't know. Any, <laughs> Muhammad, I don't know. Last name? Don't be shy. You can say it. <laughs> I don't know. What is it? No, because we were talking about it because you said... For Christian, it was. Hi. Yeah, George. Who? I don't know. Some character. Oh, 
like Christian and Lebanese are like George. George, yeah. yeah they're all George. They're hey. all George. I also not be something about the men. Yes. <laughs> what I <is> say? <laughs> no, because you're talking about how like I went to an basically all Arab high school and uh, how there's like 17 pages of like Bazzi in the yearbook, for example. Right. And how like they don't have that experience of being with like mostly Arabs. Who's they? Capri and Raph. Oh. Okay. Thank you. That's all you call me for? Yeah. We're literally recording the podcast right now. Huh? We're recording the podcast right now. Nice sex. I think it's a projection. Oh, Capri? Mm-hmm. Jasmine just needs to be Okay, bye. On- of her marriage. Bye. Love you, bye. Or we just had a full-on conversation with her mom. I wouldn't say it was full-on a conversation. It was mostly silence. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're going to have to cut a lot of that. I know. No, 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 it's okay. My mom scares me sometimes. I'm not going to lie. Like, Does she intimidate you? She doesn't intimidate me. She's just like fucking like, I don't know what the fuck she's going to say. You know, like, well, thank God we're recording. She, I know she's just, she's just predictable. Like, I don't know that half the shit she's going to say, like unpredictable. She told me a story about potentially got this out about one of her autistic co-workers and his special interest is Pokemon. And mm-hmm. then he brought his binder to show her all his cards. Well, that's cute. I like that. I and that. I was that's like, really and sweet. I was like, be nice, mom. <laughs> that's really sweet. Yeah, that's really nice. That's really nice. And she was like, he reminded me of your brother. <laughs> Frogan uh, got autistic and showed me a list of songs. She's like she was super interested in All Time Low. And so she showed me Stop, a list of All Time Low songs. Listen. Process the thought. Process the thought. Do you need more time to process the thought? So Process what? the thought. Wait. Process the thought. Because we're at, we're we're at an hour 20. 20. Yeah, Here's we are. the thing. So I didn't talk to Raph a lot last week. Yeah. So yesterday was catch up. It was a lot. In a good way. Like, I was like, oh, this is nice. Was, yeah. Like, so, there's a lot to say today. Yeah. And then I, I was just like, I'm like, I'm talking this guy's fucking ear off. And I felt really bad. I had nothing to say. But yeah. It was nice. I was just like, you know, I tweeted something. I was like, the irony of skipping like your song on repeat. Like, you're, I have a, you have, ugh. ah, okay. I can't fucking think. Okay, just breathe. I it's can't. all good. Anyways, the black kids would steal <laughs> shit from me in the back of the bus. So, can't say that. That's true, though. <laughs> My school, my school was it was all black with a sprinkle of white and a sprinkle of like Mexican. Oh yeah, did they steal one of your hats? Yeah, when I was younger, I, I, <laughs> dude, yeah, I was pissed, but I didn't know what to do, and I haven't told anybody about this, not even my mom. So I, uh, one time I, I like, you know, how, like you, you like on cereal boxes, you could like get the box like prize or whatever, like you turn in like a hundred of like the Kellogg's like tickets on the bat on the box you cut them out you send them in you get you send in like about like 20 or 30 of them mm-hmm. and you get like a, a prize the prize was a beanie with a bill like a little bill mm-hmm. with, that had guitar hero and i was like i was in love with the guitar hero back then. i was like this is perfect so i worked my ass off i collected all these box tops and i sent them in hey 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 I'm listening. thank you hey I'm listening. thank you so i sent them in and <laughs> I sent them in, I got the hat, I put it on, and not even the first day that I wore it to school, the first day I wore it. Like the cool kids stole it from you? The, yeah, the cool kids stole it from me. What'd I, they do? Well, I went, I sat like kind of like in the back ish of the bus, like in the middle ish. Were you like a nerd kid? I mean, yeah, but like not horrible. So yeah. one kid came up, his name, he called him a Little Boosie back then. His name was like Little Boosie. Like Kiss? No. Boosie. No. Is it, no, it, Bousy. no, no, he's there's no Arabs here. There's no Arabs. <laughs> little Bousy. If you don't know Bousy, like kiss. the rapper, Little Boosie. Little Bousy. I'm gonna kiss you. Wipe me down. You like that guy? Yeah, like yeah, Little Bousy is the kiss. Like, that's not. I don't, like, don't care. Be, Anyways, Little Don't be kiss. homophobic, Little Bousy. No, I'm not being homophobic. I <laughs> kiss me all you want. Uh, no, but then he's like, "Hey, man, let me borrow your hat," and I was like, "No." And he's like, let me try it on at least. I'm like, you want to just try on my hat? He's like, yeah. And I was afraid of this kid because he's notorious for killing people. So I, like in, in middle school, high school, is notorious for killing people, which means he probably didn't do shit. But he was a, he was a, he was a gangbanger. So. Okay. It just sounds racist. <laughs> it's right not now. racist. He was, he was an actual gangbanger. I actually was friends with a gang in high school. But yeah. I could yeah. Okay. Did he steal your hat? 
no. Yeah. It's, so it's, I was like, I have so he's like, do it. He's like, give me your fuck. He's like, give me your fucking hat. So I was like, all right, but let me get it after the bus. So you can try it on. We can just get it after we get off. He's like, yeah, okay. I've never seen him again. Wait, he never showed up to school again? Like, I haven't seen him. Like, he didn't show up to school like, ever I, again? Like, I haven't seen him for, like, three bus rides after that. And then, like, I saw him again. I was like, hey, where's my, where's my hat? So you saw him again? I did see him again once. He never I saw said, his hat again. I never saw my hat again, though. But did you see the guy? Like, I saw the guy again. I was like, where's my hat? He's like, what hat? I was like, dude, you remember the hat I, bar- I let you, like, try on? Mm-hmm. I was like, where is it? He's like, I don't even know you. And then, and then, yeah, you stole but I never shit. saw my, so I, I got, so I got my, I got that shit stolen. I, uh, I fuck you, little boosie. If you're watching this, I hope you fucking uh, little boosie, little boosie. Oh, boosie. Uh, so anyways, I, when I was a kid, I, mm-hmm. my friends got in a fight and, uh, I got jumped by five people at the same time, mm-hmm. but we had like, they, two of these guys wanted to fight each other. Cause we had showed up at the school for them to have a fight. Okay. When the fight actually happened, it was <laughs> awful. It was like two white guys just swinging and missing. Mm-hmm. And what ended up happening was that at the like they brought their crew, we brought our crew, but our crew was late. So my friend was like, "Hey man, I got us. Like I hit up my homie. He's gonna show up. We're all gonna fucking like we have our crew. They have theirs. So that they showed up earlier, and we were like waiting for the fight. We're like, "Hey, l- let's wait for both these people, and then we'll have the fight off. You know? Right." And as we're doing this, the uh, my my friends wait what what do you you were a bad fucking kid I was horrible so I get jumped by five people and I'm swinging at them to try to get them away and the worst pain that I got into in that fight I like stayed out of the I was like big enough that I was like swinging my arm like a fucking like a water hose like <laughs> yeah, hey yeah, back yeah, yeah, back yeah. off you got this orangutan arm so like yeah, yeah I do that's yeah. the thing so I kept them the distance I hurt myself <laughs> and this is like I could have like literally got my ass whooped but I was like very smart. So I kept them away, and then right when like I'm about to like I'm like, dude, I'm actually like fighting five people right now. I slam my head in the back of one of those old fucking, uh, uh, you know, like AC units. Yeah, I just like knock myself out. <laughs> and right at that moment, the dude that we called shows up, and I didn't know him. My friend did, and it's a full gang, and they brought guns. <laughs> so I didn't see the guns, but apparently other people saw them. So they have the fight, and then. It's basically a tie. The Jets are gonna run Yeah, it was so dumb. Tonight. And then after, apparently, the people who style. were against us saw yeah. the guns and they freaked out. So they came to our house to apologize, to like individually apologize. And they stopped. Like you were the Don. They squashed the beef. Yeah. Yeah. So like, I got like a reputation, like, don't fuck with me. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, I fought five people and we brought guns. Yeah. Know? It was I, really bad. It was that's bad. That's cool. The one time I got jumped, um, I didn't have any of that. I just got knocked out. Yeah. yeah. Well, I hit my head against the Yeah. Thing I got actually hit in the yeah. face. I've never gotten beat up at school. Really? Oh, that's good. Only at home. Oh, okay. no. Wow. Well. Well, anyways, that concludes this week's episode of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> the most serious fucked up. I don't even know how to describe it, but uh, we're going to keep uh, our conversation going on Patreon about other high, high school traumas that we experienced. So what you could well, do. You do a where, are they, where are they out now segment as well? Uh, I forgot to prep for that. So oh, we, so maybe <laughs> we won't do that. Maybe we will. Who knows? We'll do a where are they now child uh, actors because this is probably we, we've gone way over, but we will do where are they now child sure. actors. Uh, but you guys can sub to the Patreon uh, right now. If you're watching it, you know, if you're if you want to go down below, go to the Patreon so you can finish this episode. Also. Uh, if you want to follow all of us on Twitch or on X or on Twitter or whatever the fuck they call it now, xxx.com. XNXX. Uh, yeah, but watch a, watch a clip of the Patreon right now because you're going to be missing this. Porn site. XNXX is a, is a porn outside. You know, I learned that porn from like an, an, an Arab person. They're like, did you know XNXX? I also learned it from an Arab person. Yeah, I think yeah. they just love the name. They love the name. I also X-N-X-X. learned it from an Arab person. We can't person. talk about That's this. True. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All All right, right. y'all. Thank you. Uh, Bye, guys. Bye. The way you handle pretzels is so gross. How am I supposed to handle it? Like, you just like, it's just like all falling out of your hand. I have have small hands. (laughs) Small hands, big snake. I can only handle so much. (laughs) (laughs)